my name is Mikael Red and I'm a filmmaker. I was lucky that I was exposed to cinema at an early age. I started out as a writer, but it was very natural for me to transition to a more visual medium of storytelling. When I was around 14, 15, I enrolled in the Marilu Diaz Abaya Film Workshop where I made my first uh, short films. I got my short film into an international film festival and then joined Cinemalaya and made my first feature film uh, recorder in 2013. And from there, I tried different distribution models, different genres. I, I, I made studio movies, I made um, more art house international festival films. And now I'm making films for streaming platforms like Netflix. Marami mga kwentong kumakalat tungkol dito. Alam namin na sa'yo ang parin. Pinapatago mo sa anak mo. Bayan. This is Santa Maria, scholar ng bayan. He's the chef! Uh, my movies are usually crime thrillers or more genre-oriented. And I like using genre as that vehicle to, I guess, to deliver more um, socially relevant messages. I try to stick to horror, mystery thrillers. Uh, I try to bring in Western genres and tweak it for a, a local audience. I, I like to make films that has local appeal but at the same time it still has legs internationally and can sell outside. Labas tayo dito, Miss Pat. Saan tayo pupunta? Gusto mo pa rin bang sumama? Kung pwede lang sanang lumabas dito. For me, there's no new ideas anymore, so it's basically how you tell a story. It's how you, it's all about fusion. It's how you combine different ideas to create something new. It's usually just fragments, you know, I'm inspired by different fragments and ideas, and then you sh keep them shelves, and then one day when you're in the shower, they all just snap together and form a movie. So yeah, just make sure marami kayong binabangko and baol, and then one day, uh, a scene here, a character there, a dialogue a line yeah, you kept in your mind and then all of a sudden they snap together to form a movie. So. <laughs> Years ago I would never imagine, uh, you know, even even in the mainstream industry, I wouldn't imagine Star Cinema green lighting a zombie movie, and now finally I, I I'm I'm making one, and that's one of the fantasies. You know, I've always had as a growing up as a filmmaker, I used to do a lot of ketchup blood, you know, genre of films with my friends and classmates, and now I'm doing it in a studio scale. I'm glad that you know the mainstream and studios are exploring. Um, newer stories, um, even newer, I would say, tone. Like, Eerie was a very dark, bleak R13 film, and yet it did well. So the, the tastes of the audiences are changing. You know, as a director, you're usually the most inexperienced person on set. You've done less projects than the people around you. Um, you're already lucky if you get to do one film a year. Uh, the people around you, even down to the catering, they probably have been in 10 sets that year. So you, you know, you have to learn. Uh, you have to be humble enough to hear them out, uh, learn from them, learn from others, ask questions. But at the same time, you have to be confident enough to listen to yourself. Because at the end of the day, you know, they're hiring you for your voice. Uh, your talent is your taste. So that's what you bring to the table and you're supposed to make everyone believe in your vision. You're the only person who has seen the movie in your head and then you, so you have to make sure everyone sees the same movie uh, even though it's still being made. So that's the challenge and you basically have to let them know that you know what you're doing uh, and that has always been the challenge for me because I started really early so everyone around me was you know more experienced, older so yeah it's it's a, it's a balance. Yeah. Learn from them, uh, be humble, but be confident enough to make sure you, you know, your vision is made. So right now, the business model is sort of like a casino roulette. Now you would produce, let's say, 10 movies for 10 million each. And then one of, nine will be flops, but one movie will make 200 to, you know, to recover. So it's a very, um, 
a problematic, uh, I guess, business model because it sort of creates disposable cinema. So I guess the challenge is to fix uh, distribution, make sure your movies are seen and watched. And I know that it, you know, it's it's also a problem with our economy because maybe we don't have a large enough middle class to sustain a properly budgeted genre movie. That's why we need to stick to smaller scale movies. As a filmmaker, my my vision or at least my my ideology, my philosophy is to make films that are non-formula, that you know push genre. And so the technique we do is we make it good enough, or at least technically, um, um, technically meets the standards of international companies. So we have the international buffer. So we sell here, we sell outside, and it sustains our budget. And if we we can keep doing that, we can keep growing. Uh, the, the film's uh, budgets and scales and eventually the audience taste will catch up. So it's going to be a long process but I think it starts from there. It starts from making movies for export. I think if you're a filmmaker, you don't need me to tell you that you're a filmmaker. You know, it's, it's, it's like a sickness. Eh? It's an itch now you have to scratch. So whether, you know, if you're a filmmaker, you know it. It's like jumping off the cliff, nah, building your wings. All you need is cuento uh, and camera, diba? Parang ganun. Yun lang naman kailangan. Uh, don't let anyone stop you, not even yourself. And you know you're a filmmaker when you finally make a film that's not required. You know, it's not a project, it's not uh, for your thesis. It's just you wanting to tell that story no matter what. And like I said, you know, I started out shooting ketchup blood zombie films with my friends in high school. And now we're doing like a studio zombie movie. So as long as you aim and you know where you want to go, uh, you know where you're going, um, you'll know how to get there. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mikel Red and I'm a filmmaker. Please watch my films on Netflix. Uh, Birdshot is on Netflix. Eerie is on Netflix. Dead Kids is a Netflix original. Please watch it. And then Block Z is uh, the first full-scale Filipino zombie movie made by a studio. So. It's coming soon. Uh, watch that as well. Support genre films. Yeah.